John Wick 4, I, I liked it. <sighs> Is he dead, though? Even though he, he passes out, he slumps over, he says, Helen, he slumps over on the stairs, right? The only reason I say John Wick isn't dead is because when the Bowery King and, and Winston are at his grave site, the, 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 the headstones side by side, Helen and John, the dog looks off in the cut. Okay. And cause they're talking about John and whatever the case is. What do you think he's in heaven or hell? Winston says, oh, who knows? And then the dog looks off in the cut. I'm like, I don't think he's dead. Cause that was his dog. I don't think he's dead. So I don't know. I don't know. We don't know. I don't know if John is dead, y'all. I don't know if John dead. I I don't know. I don't know. It was good though. I mean, the funny the funny moments were. Uh, I mean, goddamn, when they kicked him down the stairs, four flights of stairs, all two hundred twelve, two hundred twenty two steps. He's just falling and falling. That was hilarious. And then when he jumps out of a third story window and lands on the van, oh, we all, everybody in the, in the, in the theater was like, oh, we all cringed. Yo, it was good. It was good. It was good. Good. It was good. I liked it. I liked John Wick. I liked it. I liked it. I, um, but pretty much all of John Wick's friends, they all died for nothing, y'all. Everybody that John Wick had a marker on, they all died from, for nothing. And I, I, I was hoping they were going to bring back Halle Berry's character because we don't know what happened to her after she lost her hotel, you know, helping John. So we don't, uh, man, like I wish they kind of would have, you know, got us up to speed with that. Shinji, and then he went to, he went to uh, Continental Osaka and went to Japan. Shinji's like, this is my friend. I'm going to risk my entire hotel and risk my daughter's life for my friend. He tells Kane, you don't know about brotherhood. I was like, ooh. Yeah? So I believe, okay, so if you're going to ask me, the movie message was more for the young, the young, um, ooh, hopefully I don't get jammed up for this. So for the young oligarchs, okay, the young oligarchs that are looking at the old heads as old and decrepit and useless because the marquee made a point saying management's in disarray, you know, the old ways, we don't care about the old ways, but how John was able to challenge the marquee, John had to go back to his family house that he was kicked out of Remember, he had his ticket punched and the only way he could challenge the marquee to a, uh, to a single duel is he had to go back to the house that he was kicked out of and get his, get his ticket reforged, remended. So he did that with Scott Atkins is in this. He is in a fat suit, but Hey, the man can throw a roundhouse kick like nobody's business. It was good seeing Scott Atkins in this. Um, cinematography, Color, beautiful. It's a beautiful, sh beautifully shot movie. It's a beautiful movie. I mean, a beautiful looking movie. Um, has some pretty nice kills in it. Um, so he had to go kill Scott Atkins, kill his character, to come back to his family, to get his ticket punt and, re you know, re remend it and be able to a actually challenge the marquee to a duel. At the end, it was pretty slick. It was, a, you know, 10 pa 30 paces, one-on-one -on -one between him and Kane. And at the end, because the whole thing was John wanted to kill the Marquis because the Marquis was given power by, the, by the, the 12 families to go after John by any means necessary. Because, you know, Marquis represents like the new oligarchs. So in this, to me, this was more a message to the, to the young oligarchs like, you're going to have to still respect the old ways. Because the last thing that Marquis wanted to do was a one-on-one -on -one duel with John Wick. He had Kane. He nominated Kane to do it. Kane was under contract with the high table to keep his daughter safe. So he had to, he had to do what the, what the uh, Marquis said because the Marquis brought him out of retirement. Right? But all of John Wick's friends pretty much all died for nothing. John Wick is a horrible friend. The only f friends that didn't die, Winston and the Bowery King. 
And we don't know what happened with Halle Berry's character. Okay, so at the end, um, they, they Kane and, and 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 John clip each other in the shoulder. Then it goes down to the twenty paces, and then um, they hit each other again in, in in the side or whatever, right? And then it's at ten paces. So at ten paces, they draw on fire. Kane hits John in the in the stomach. John never fires his weapon. So the Marquis like, oh, all right, stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop, stop. I'll take over from here. I'll take you about to finish him off. And then Winston's like, you arrogant prick. John never fired his weapon. And John w- rises up and says, consequences. Headshot. Headshot the marquee. Headshot. John Wick is free and clear. Winston gets a brand new. They, they go, they're, he's free and clear. They're going to rebuild uh, the Hotel Continental. Winston goes back, gets back being the manager. But the marquee in, in the early beginning, like I told y'all, the black man had to go. He says, since you're no, you're no longer a manager, you don't need a concierge. And he shoots Sharon in the chest. Literally 10 minutes into the movie. Like I told y'all. Okay? Come on, bro. Y'all know what I do. I be spoiling it. Y'all know what I do. It was good, though. I ain't gonna front. It was good. It was good. It was good. It was good. So... Once again, the two messages that I would tell y'all to take away from this, man, it's y'all going ham in the chats. Y'all going ham in the chats. I'm so sorry. Did I forget? Did I miss a super chat? There you go. Ed Nice. Thank you for the 10 on the super chat. I'm here for the time foolery. Now let the hip paper bag song. Let me feel it in my bone. I got you. All right, all right, okay, okay. Uh, so then um, after he headshots the marquee, everybody gets what they want, everybody walks away scot-free. And then John, you know, goes, sits, he says, he says, Winston, take me, would you mind taking me home? Winston's like, of course. John goes down the steps, sits on the steps, he says, Helen, and then he falls over. It's a beautiful movie, man. Beautifully shot movie. Um, he kills this fool. <laughs> this man killed the high elder, the one of the... So in this one, the elder, the one that sits above all, from John from part three, he died. So there's a new elder. He guns him down in the first opening act. So the high tech was like, kill this man by any means necessary. But the overall, the overall arching arcing theme is you're gonna respect these old ways. Because once again, um had to respect. That John went back to his house, got in good graces with his house. They punched his chick, his ticket for him to be able to challenge the Marquis de Gras to a one-on-one duel to end all this. And, then, you know, on top of that, everybody had, had a $50, $40 million bounty on his head. The one character I was, like, iffy about was Mr. Nobody, the brother with the painted fingernails. He had the dog. He had a German Shepherd. So he was decent towards the end. Towards the end, I was like, okay, he's all right. You know, but he, he was a tracker, so I guess he, you know, like, I, he wasn't really in. The, they all operate under the high table, but he wasn't with the clan per se. But he's like an outside independent. And, you know, he was tracking whatever. And, you know, when, when John saved his dog from getting killed, that's when Mr. Nobody was like, okay, John's a good guy. Let me, let me help John out. And then Donnie Yen, of course, over the top acting, Plays another blind man. Like, you played a blind man in Rogue One, so you're playing another blind guy. Okay? He made a deal with the high table. He offered his his eyes, his vision to the high table. As, as, that's how he pledged his fealty. Mm. But another another one, like, when Shinji was telling Kane, he said, look, there's, there's a brotherhood. He said, we're all under the, he says, we're all under the high table. He says, yeah, but there's a thing called brotherhood. I was like, okay, that, I felt that. But once again, Shinji died for nothing. Now his daughter, at the very, very end, if you stayed throughout the entire movie, which probably a lot of y'all didn't do, there's a, an end credit scene when um, Shinji's daughter, because after uh, 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 Continental Osaka gets decimated, um, Kane kills Shinji in, in, in a sword duel. And then she picks up, she picks up his sword, and he's like, put, put it down, live. And as she's walking off, he says, I'll be waiting for you. Because she knows she's, she's going to want revenge. So at the very, very end, 
when when Kane, uh, Kane is free and clear, he goes to see his daughter at some musical institute school because she's a violinist, whatever. You see his, you see uh, Shinji's daughter with a knife walking up to Kane. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. Okay. 